Okay, we're going to go over autoimmune conditions, um, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome, uh, lupus, multiple chemical sensitivity, idiopathic thrombocytopenia where your platelets are getting destroyed, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, multiple uh, or um, mixed connective tissue disorder, so many abbreviations here. Raynaud's disease, and I don't know if I missed any there, but uh, basically any autoimmune condition, there is hope. And I'm going to show you how we uh, look at these things in a very different light than what you're traditionally used to. So an autoimmune disease is when the immune system is attacking itself. Immune system attack of self tissues. And just some stat statistics, uh, it affects proper approximately one in five people. In medical diagnosis, the attention is primarily pl placed on the damaged tissues or glands. So if you have a Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the attention is placed on the thyroid gland. And, and we, I believe, and uh, there are you know, many people who uh, think that way, the way that I think in functional medicine, versus traditional medicine. I think our attention should be focused on the immune system. It's an immune system disorder. Uh, the, the immune system is the uh, system or the organ behaving improperly. So let's pay our uh, uh, dues to that. Let's pay attention to what the immune system is doing. So how can we shift the immune system toward improved function? Looking at the process, considering all the symptom systems uh, that, you know, contribute to how the immune system is functioning. Uh, for instance, the adrenal hormones. If we get stressed out and the stress becomes chronic and the chronic stress becomes a hormonal change, that has an impact on your immune system. So uh, we need to look at all those systems and we need to trust the adaptations. We need to look at you know, what that means is if the immune system is attacking some of your tissue, um, well, trusting is that that process is in place for a reason and uh, we need to ask why a perfect system is is responding and, and treating itself in such a destructive um, fashion and we need to move forward in faith uh, which means when we find the imbalances that are causing this destructive process we can have faith that if we can correct those imbalances, your health is going to return. So let's just look at a healthy immune response. In a normal immune response, an antigen invades. An antigen is anything designated by the immune system as foreign, which could be infection, bacteria, viral, chemicals such as heavy metals. Um, pesticides, things like that, or it could be an allergen, uh, the most famous probably being gluten intolerance or wheat intolerance in celiac disease. Um, but there's a, an immune sensitivity to those foods. When an antigen uh, reaches the bloodstream, a macrophage bumps into it and, and eats it, basically. While it's uh, processing that foreign substance, it radios for help via what is called the Th1 cytokines. These are hormone-like substances that uh, call into action a certain uh, group of cells, namely the cytotoxic T cells and the natural killer cells. And that's what these are down here, T and natural killer cells. So those are who come to clean up the mess. If the T cells fail to vanquish the antigen, uh, perhaps it's a virus, and virus being so tiny that they get into cells and they are uh, not able to be found easily by the cytotoxic T cells, a further radio, um, uh, radioing for help 
to the B cells via the Th2 cytokines. And these, again, are just hormone-like substances that communicate cell to cell in our body to initiate a new response. So the B cells come out, and what they do is they tag the infected cells for destruction. So let's say, um, like in hepatitis, the virus gets inside the liver cells, it tags those infected cells for destruction. And then the T cells and the natural killer cells can recognize the antigen and further um, uh, accomplish its uh, removing of it. And when the uh, war is won, the T suppressor cells call in the troops. And T suppressor cells are unique individual cells in the immune system that are um, akin to um, one of the secretaries of state that um, you know literally send a, a message to attack or to withdraw. Another very important cell in uh, looking at the diagnosis on a deeper level. So immune dysregulation, dysregulation, regulation is um, everything is being balanced, dysregulation is things are out of balance. So the things that we see when we get into our diagnostics are an imbalance between the T and the B cells. So T cells are really high, B cells are really low, B cells are really high, T cells are really low, or some fashion of that. We don't have a balanced immune response. We have a lack of normal uh, suppression, which means that those T suppressor cells are um, being inhibited or suppressed by an even higher. So if you suppress suppression, you get activation, and activation in your immune system is good when there's a threat. But uh, when the threat happens to be your joint tissue and rheumatoid arthritis, that uh, suppression is something that we rather want. There could be a continuous activation, things that I mentioned before, like uh, uh, gluten intolerance, where somebody continues to eat wheat because they don't know that they have gluten intolerance, and they continuously activate their immune system. There's something called compromised barriers. The barrier systems of the human body are the skin. We're all familiar with that. The lung barrier, so there's a mucosal barrier in the lungs that um, um, protects our internal system from breathing in foreign elements, and there's an intestinal barrier uh, which prevents our internal environment uh, from absorbing through the intestinal wall things that are foreign to um, that internal environment. So if the barrier is compromised, well, it means that the permeability is affected, it means it absorbs more things or allows more things to pass through. Then when we eat our food, um, undigested proteins, waste materials are absorbed into the bloodstream and that results in an uh, immune activation. Stress, as I mentioned already, and stress isn't just life. Stress also refers to chronic anemic states, meaning you don't have enough oxygen going to your body. That's pretty stressful for your body and your nervous system. Junk food that causes um, uh, blood sugar spikes, uh, which results in insulin spikes, which then results in low blood sugar, which then results in uh, activation of the adrenal system, which is your stress system, to bring the blood sugar back to normal. So we'll get into that in more detail, but uh, junk food is, is a stressor too. It's not just a blood sugar problem. Um, the pancreas and the adrenals work together to maintain healthy blood sugar. Inflammation is another key stress um, producer. When there's inflammation in your system, your body is signaling via hormones, such as cortisol, that it's sick. And uh, when you're inflamed because of a diet, because of uh, uh, immune activity, uh, we constantly get those stress signals. And like I mentioned, with the uh, junk food insulin surges, insulin resistance, which means that your uh, insulin isn't even working very well for you anymore. Its job is to get sugar inside the cell, and when we become resistant, it can't do that. And also other hormonal uh, problems can uh, contribute to immune dysregulation.